you are in the third year or fourth year and if you are pursuing or you are going after cat examination or gmat for that matter there is a likelihood that you might not get a very good college uh, outside of india uh, if you are pursuing a mm-hmm. gmat right and for that i mean uh, keeping that in mind you could go for fellowships uh, as diverse as young india fellowship or gandhi fellowship or genpack social impact fellowship or vedika fellowship uh, which is for women uh, as well to know first about young india fellowship when i was in my second year of my engineering stream i was pursuing mechanical engineering from srm university chennai i wanted to do something uh, uh, interdisciplinary multidisciplinary after my engineering and while you know mm-hmm. googling through all the fellowships or all the courses out there i i chanced upon young india fellowship i read more about it that uh, it it actually uh, pulls people from different backgrounds from different parts of the country and not just one uh, specific uh, uh, discipline say science or social uh, social science per se and that interested me a lot and uh, then also i was writing poetry i was actively involved in literary activities i had uh, a poetry book published as well so i thought that this would be a natural inclination or this would be a natural you know a step after my engineering and uh, i think uh, it was a six month long journey to finally get into young india fellowship uh, it is all about uh, your profile uh, what all activities did you carry out both in your uh, i mean undergraduate stream or prior to that in your 10th and 12th uh, and also it was about writing essays and also it was about the impact that you would gonna you know bring to the world after you complete the program uh, and i think it was a holistic uh, uh, set of questions that they had uh, you know asked us i just i joined just after my graduation i did uh, get some very good uh, offers from two it companies but uh, you know i decided uh, to to uh, to not uh, take those up and then join young india fellowship instead and i mean to your question if uh, people having some prior experience can join this program or not the answer is definitely is a definite yes because i remember uh, in fact majority uh, i mean most of my team members or most of the cohort members had some prior experience but i wouldn't say that uh, having uh, no prior experience uh, would not bring an impact to your profile uh, we we definitely see people with or without i mean prior experience getting into the program as well right i, I am one of the example but here over here i mean in the young india fellowship we were exposed to a plethora of courses out there in the world but uh, the elm program that i talked about is of 8 uh, month duration and uh, it's not that you'll have to devote all f- i mean all 5 days into that project it it, it was a quite fle- flexible there were four credits attached to that uh, elm project uh all you have to do is uh, gain those credits uh spend as much time as possible uh i mean during your weekdays or over the weekend go to the uh, field or go to the organization that you are paired up with it could be a corporate it could be a public policy or uh, think tank and then you'll have to carry out an assignment that they have uh, given to you exactly and we're not paid stipend as well so but it's a mandatory course that each of the fellows will have to take uh, take up uh because uh, again Uh, in the normal management uh, or in the MBA uh, programs as well, right? You'll have to do two internships mm-hmm. over the duration of two years, and therefore, to to bring that aspect as well into the liberal arts curriculum, into the liberal arts program, they have introduced this uh, a structure of. Uh, I mean, they have mm-hmm. introduced this module and, and the structure, uh, and this is how they have laid out the structure as well. I think that's a great and interesting question. I could go on and on. sharing uh, some of the very 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 inspiring uh, success stories from my cohort and from my seniors as well after the fellowship uh, i think she went on to pursue her mba from harvard university uh, uh, i mean scoring 780 in gmat she had a pharmaceutical ba- uh, i mean she had a biotechnology background there was this other fellow who was uh, very clear because his dad is a civil servant uh, working at the ministry uh, at some ministry so that he was very clear he was very clear that he was going to pursue civil services so after the fellowship uh he 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 did get some very good offers uh, i mean a pre placement uh, packages but he thought of declining it and uh, going for the civil services and i think he will get through this time 
uh, so we are all waiting to hear that good news there was this mm-hmm. other person uh, saloni uh, who who was a marketer by profession before entering into the young india fellowship uh, curriculum uh, i think after the fellowship got over she joined an edutech uh, i mean uh, edutech uh, uh, startup after that she decided to give up the 10 to 6 wala routine job and do something mm-hmm. uh, for her passion and now she's a great mm-hmm. youtube uh, you know uh, uh, youtuber and uh, her videos are garnering more than 1 lakh views uh, each time she uploads a new video on lifestyle on cooking on how to manage your personal finance on how to pursue a career that that interests you or that suits you for me i was very much interested to take up a job at uh, a corporate uh, sector and uh, mm-hmm. and I, and after my graduation i was uh, you know picked up by genpack as part of the campus uh, hiring program and it's been mm-hmm. four and a half years since i have been working in genpack i have done multiple roles over the course of uh, uh, five odd years so it's a great journey for not only for me but for the entire batch as well so i believe i was in the second category i was very much clear that this fellowship will give me uh, an ecosystem of not only very good mentors professors but also a cohort of uh, uh, you know bright minded people uh, who have done stuff before uh, entering into this uh, or before getting into this program and that's how my fellowship was all about there are four to five stages when i had applied uh, the first was uh, how has your academic uh, you know credentials how, how is your academic credentials look like second what have you done to prove your uh, uh, metal on the ground third what additional skill set or what additional uh, benefit you would bring to the cohort which is extremely diverse which is extremely unique in its you uh, know structure for the uh, who are some of the people who are going to you know uh, uh, stay as a supporting stay as supporting pillars behind your credentials who could back up your uh, uh, success story so far so i mean the letter of references so these are four or five broad elements that had uh, been a part of the uh, that were part of the program or that were part of the application mm-hmm. so the first one would be communication skills english is not my native language so yeah uh, is my native language and i always ask people right ki aap kaun se language mein sochte ho which language do you think in? to me the answer is uh, i think in odia and that that's why Uh, i communicate uh, first in odia in my head and then i translate it to english right it used to be the case and then but after i got into the program uh, i sort of improved on that i think the first one would be the communication skills second would be project management i used to be good at project management but i got better at project management or you know multi or handling multiple stakeholders which you call stakeholder management after the fellowship program mm-hmm. third is meeting the deadlines I think it is an important trait that every individual who is aspiring to be a leader in his or her, in his or her field uh, should definitely possess. Uh, I I mean, as an engineer, we are always used to you know doing this stuff. Uh, I mean, one night before the submission, but uh, uh, I mean, in the fellowship, uh, I was taught to be punctual, to be diligent. and to be before time right to be to be meeting your deliverables if you are meeting your deliverables even by 5 minutes your grades uh, go down i decided to take up a a job in a company that gives you flexibility of both you could do your 10 to 5 am regular uh, and your routine job as well as you could get time to contribute to the welfare activities and uh, uh, i mean comparing both these aspects i found the genpack to, uh, to be such a company that gives value to your work as well as to your uh, other i mean other the side activities right and therefore mm-hmm. i got i got picked up by genpack but in the very first i was doing business analyst i was doing a business analyst role for a senior leader uh, but i decided to you know to switch my uh, streams and uh, take up uh, something in the social sector space and that's how i came to know about the genpack uh, uh, social impact fellowship so it's a one year program wherein uh, uh, they send people uh, to, to 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 select few ngos to select few non non profits so that they could uh, use their professional skills to advance social good in my case my skill set that i had learned uh, uh, in the in the one year that i had spent at genpack was uh, lean and six sigma and therefore the whole uh, uh, premise or the whole uh, rationale behind launching this program was could we uh you know 
uh, contribute our lean and six sigma methodology to to scale up the non-profits because it's not possible for uh, a, a big corporates like genpack to give funds to each of the non each of the non-profits out there in the world so is there a possibility that we could give out uh, i mean so that is there a possibility that we could give our professional skills uh, instead of mm-hmm. funds and and that's how the program got launched and i was one of the fortunate uh, six people who got selected by the management by the company to pursue this program definitely i think uh, engineering uh, curriculum should be as holistic as possible i remember when i was pursuing my engineering there was this course called uh, basics of economics right about microeconomics mm-hmm. and macroeconomics it was a huge uh, you know people liked it very much it was it had a huge uh, fan following uh, in our in our In, in, let's say the other disciplines right the fluid mechanics or thermal engineering people never used to go to classes right they they would feel like okay if you will study overnight we could get good grades right but uh, economics is something you have to be in the class uh, interact with professor know about the data points know about various uh, you know aspects of uh, economic theories that we are studying mm. and i think uh, it was a huge it had a huge fan following so 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 considering that point and considering the era that we are advancing into we would definitely need 21st century skills and not just regular uh, you know in uh, i mean uni disciplinary uh, skills i think uh, the education of the 21st century should definitely involve a multidisciplinary skills if you are in the third year or fourth year and if you are pursuing or you are going after cat examination or gmat for that matter there is a likelihood that you might not get a very good college uh, outside of india uh, if you are pursuing a mm-hmm. gmat right and for that i mean uh, keeping that in mind you could go for fellowships uh, as diverse as young india fellowship or gandhi fellowship or genpack social impact fellowship or vedika fellowship uh, which is for women uh, as well and then work mm-hmm. for certain amount of years and then decide to go for mb if you are planning to live uh, uh, i mean live an american dream uh, or pursue a college uh, outside of india but having said that but if i getting an admit from one of the uh, iims in india i would suggest uh, you should definitely go for uh, the mba program and not choose young india fellowship right because any which way i have seen in my batch i have seen that in my batch as well people they uh, i mean we studied young india fellowship but now we are thinking that we should definitely go for an mba degree right yeah because mm. because in yif we never uh, were taught about some of the core or the fundamental uh, 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 course modules that are being taught at uh, mba programs right we are taught about liberal arts program but uh, again mm. again to 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 rise up the uh, ladder of uh, a corporate or to rise up the uh, corporate ladder you should definitely need a combination of both the the, the liberal arts uh, program the critical thinking skills the analytical mindset mm-hmm. as well as core business fundamentals which is required uh, or which is expected of every manager or every you know uh, rising leader so uh, uh, so i mean to, to brief or to give you a summary uh, if you are in your third year or fourth year and if you are uh, aiming to do your cat immediately after your engineering and if you are getting a very good admit or if you are getting a very good call from one of the iims in our country you should definitely go for that you shouldn't waste your year but in case mm-hmm. you are not getting a call from any of those iims you should definitely pursue one of these fellowships build your profile then again uh, i mean you could uh, any which is get into iim as an executive uh, through executive mba programs after 5 years yes, uh, completing of your uh, uh, normal okay. uh, yeah or if you want to do your mba from outside you could leverage this uh, fellowship program because it is generally considered as india's roads program so build your profile get very good uh, amount of work experience get uh, very good uh, i mean get good letter of references and then apply for uh, your mba program out of it try to wire if you are confused upon entering into wire you will be confidently confused